Hey, it's Steve. Well, today we're going to take a look at the Celestron motorized focuser and see if it's something that might be helpful for you. Look at why I bought it and what the pros and cons of this focuser are. So before we actually look at the focuser, look at how you install it and how it's used and that kind of thing, uh, let's talk about what the benefits of this focuser are, why I bought it, and, and why you, know, you might want to use it yourself as well. So I bought it to use on my 8-inch Edge HD telescope that I use for planetary imaging. And the problem that I sort of have with it is that because it's on an evolution mount, when you try to focus it, there's a lot of vibration that happens and it makes it really hard to get precise focus because everything is jittering around. And so you can't exactly tell while your hand is on the, on the, you know, the, the focuser whether you've sort of improved or made worse the focus until you let everything settle down. And you can adjust a little bit, let everything settle down, adjust a little bit, let everything settle down, and that works fine. It's just that it takes a while. And if you're swapping between like visual and cameras or swapping cameras or, you know, that kind of thing, or you've, or you've changed something in the imaging path, it can take quite a while to actually get the focus kind of dialed into where it should be. And yeah, I wanted something that was gonna be easier and a little bit faster to, to, to use. Now, obviously, if you have an SCT telescope, this is something that you might consider to, to help improve that, that same issue. Certainly, uh, there are other options available as well. ASI has a motorized focuser. And if you use the ASI Air to try to you know, do your imaging, then certainly that would be the route to go with and not the Celestron one. And, and really, probably a, a good delimiting factor here is if you have a Celestron you know, SCT, which is, which is what you can use this focuser on, and you have a Celestron mount and you plan to use Celestron software for, for stuff, then it's a good option to use a Celestron focuser. But if you're gonna try to use you know, like an ASI Air Pro to control everything or something like that, then you know, it's probably gonna be a, a big hurdle to actually try to even get it to work. And so that probably wouldn't be the best option for you. Also, if you're strictly visual and you don't do imaging at all, it's kind of a, a maybe on this focuser because one downside of the focuser is that once it's installed, you have to use it to focus. You can't manually turn the knob anymore because the focuser is on it. And so if you want to just quickly focus after changing eyepieces, you have to use the hand controller to control the focuser. And that might not be a big deal. And in fact, as long as the telescope is on your Celestron mount that you normally use, then it doesn't really make much difference. It's pretty fast to use the hand controller to do the focusing. And what's nice about this, this focuser is that you can use the Celestron hand controller to both move the telescope and to focus the telescope without changing menus at all. So the scroll buttons will control your focusing while the regular directional buttons will control the direction of the mount. And so you can control both without even really looking at the hand controller. And so it works really nice. So if you do have a Celestron mount and you do use a Celestron hand controller, then this focuser can be a really nice option for you. But if you are in a situation where you might take your telescope from a Celestron mount, you might then put it on you know, some other type of mount. Maybe you have like an Ioptron mount or you have some other type of, of mount that you're gonna kind of swap your telescope between then that kind of presents a problem because you have to use the hand controller or, you know, software, you know, the Celestron software to control the focuser. So if you don't have software that can interface with the focuser, then that becomes a little bit more of a hurdle. Now it is, it is compliant with different software, so you can use the focuser with software besides the Celestron hand controller and software. But I haven't tried that myself. I don't know how well that works. And so I'm not really sure how hard it is to get this focuser to work with other types of systems. That is one thing to consider. Also, if you are just doing visual, you might really just benefit from replacing the stock focuser with something like a feather touch focuser, which you can you know just kind of swap out. And then you have a you know a two-speed focuser where you can have a fine control as well as a coarse control. And it's a much smoother operation, it doesn't take as much force to turn the, the focus knob. And that's going to, as a result, produce less vibration and jitter in the image. And it can make it a lot easier to, uh, to get good focus if you do have um, that type of focuser on your, on your uh, telescope. And so that is an option to consider as well. So anyway, let's take a look at the focuser itself and how you install it and how it works. So here's how the Celestron focus motor comes packaged. Take a look at what's inside here. So 
So you have your instructions packed here. Looks like you get two wheels, which is nice. So a um, little screwdriver, Allen wrench, and regular wrench. Um, some type of adapter piece, cable, and other adapters that go on the back of the Celestron SCT that you're attaching the focuser to. So kind of a fairly large focuser. It does have these built-in port covers, so uh, that will help to keep dust and moisture out of the ports that you're not using. And we have our mounting instructions. I'm assuming these are in different languages. Yes, they are. So the instructions aren't actually this long. You basically have a page, more or less, in every language. Okay, so first I'm going to go ahead and take off the diagonal and everything else is back here. Next I need to pull off the focuser knob itself. Yeah, probably with a screwdriver seems to be the easiest way to remove this. Okay, that's off. All right, now these three screws on the focuser have to come out. And this plate comes off. Okay, for this uh, eight inch Edge HD, I use a cover plate that has uh, one side kind of removed there. And this one will, there's one side that sticks out and this is the side that goes in. I'll put all the screws in part way before tightening to make sure I can Get everything lined up first. And there is, there is a little bit of play here, so you do need to try to make sure before you tighten it that it is centered the best you can. So that seems good. Okay, next we have to loosen this clamp here on the back of the focuser. And then we install the adapter that comes with it, uh, or only if you have a nine and a quarter inch or smaller SCT. So that fits right in here and there's a hole where that lines up. And then there's a set screw we can install into this hole, which helps hold everything in. And there's also another little screw that came with it that fits in there and helps hold everything secure. And that little screw helps hold this adapter in place. Then the, we can just slide it here on top of the focuser. Okay, and there's two captive screws here on the focuser and we just tighten those. Uh, you have to line them up with one of these holes. And so while they recommend, you know, installing the focuser like this, so you have better clearance, you can install it really in any of these positions. So you got three, four, you have five different positions you can install the focuser if you need to move it around because of clearance issues. And then there's a, there was that set screw we installed with the adapter that needs to tighten up. And then we need to tighten up the little clamping screw so everything fits tight on the focuser knob. And that should be good. Connect the cable here to the one on the mount, and that should be should be good. Okay, so that's why I can't control it with a controller. Um, I am not on the right version, and so you should just be able to hit menu and focuser to use the focuser, but I don't have that in my controller, so I need to update the firmware. So to update the firmware in your hand controller, you need to go to the Celestron website and download the Celestron Firmware Manager. 
and then you hook up your computer to your hand controller via a USB cable. And then you pretty much just run the software that determines what you have uh, attached to your computer and, and updates all the firmware accordingly. And you're pretty much good to go. It does take a little bit of time, uh, but overall it went pretty easily. And then I was good to go to use a focuser. The first thing you need to do after installing your focuser is to run the calibration process. And what that does is it runs the focuser all the way from one end to the other and back. So it knows exactly you know, where it's at and what the focus range is. But once that process is done, you can use your focuser uh, as normal. So now I can go to menu on the controller, go to focuser, hit enter, move in and out. Um, you can control your speed. And then you can use the scroll buttons to control the focuser. And then I can change my scroll rate to one. And that, as you can see, turns the focuser very slowly. So you can really dial in that focus, hopefully. And so hopefully this is going to work out and do really well for me when I try to do my planetary imaging this next go around. And so here's an example of trying to focus Jupiter while uh, doing some imaging. And once I was able to get Jupiter in the field of view using the directional controls, I could use the scroll buttons to adjust the focus and get things uh, as sharp as I could. Jupiter did still move around a little bit and that was just because of the mirror shift in the SCT. So when you focus uh, you know, one way or the other, it does sometimes tilt the mirror very slightly one way or the other, which does adjust your image. And so that can sometimes still happen, but for the most part, the, uh, you know, it's a lot easier and more stable to focus using the hand controller and the motorized focuser than trying to focus with the knob, which makes Jupiter bounce all over the place, uh, kind of like what you would see here. And this first example, the seeing was just fair, and I was imaging through a layer of clouds, which made the brightness of Jupiter vary from moment to moment, which made it pretty hard to image. But you can see what, the, what I was able to achieve that evening. In this example, I had better seeing, and I did use a focus motor as well to obtain focus on my images as I took them when I made this animation uh, back in October. So anyway, that's a look at the Celestron Focuser. Uh, I have definitely enjoyed using it. It makes it a lot easier to focus with my evolution mount. I can easily focus without having to worry about the image of Jupiter or Saturn or whatever I'm trying to image, like moving all over the place. Another really cool thing that I didn't mention earlier is that you do have the numerical readout on your hand controller or other software you're using uh, that shows the actual focus location. And so, if you use a common setup, you know, in terms of imaging, you know, equipment or, you know, even visual with eyepieces, you can just make a table that says, all right, if I'm using a nine millimeter Teleview Nagler, then I need to have the focus set to like 15, 5, 25 or whatever it comes out to be. And if I'm imaging with my ASI 385 camera with the Teleview PowerMate and, and whatever, and I'm, I'm using this you know, setup, then this is the focus that I should use. Now that won't always be the case because obviously temperature changes and expansion and contraction and that kind of thing will adjust your focus a little bit, but it will get you really close. One problem that you always have when you're trying to switch between say visual and imaging is that an object can be perfectly in focus when you look at it visually, but then you put the camera in there and everything is so out of focus that you can't see anything at all. There's like no stars, no planets, like everything is just so blurred out, you can't see anything and you don't know which way to focus sometimes. And so if you have that reference table that you've created that says, okay, with this set of, of equipment, I need to have the focus around this level. You can just manually turn it there. In fact, you can actually just type in the focus point that you want and it'll automatically go there. And then you're pretty much good to go. Ha knowing where the focus points are for different things is kind of a nice feature. And you can basically you know record that and then uh, be able to go back to that focus location anytime you need to without having to sort of guess which way to turn the knob to to get your object in focus either visually or when you're trying to image. So anyway, uh, this is a great focuser. It works nicely. Uh, if you're not using Celestron hardware, you know, in terms of the mount and software and that kind of stuff, then maybe look at something else. But if you do have a Celestron mount and you do, you know, use Celestron software to control it, and you know, like the hand controller and everything else, then this is a really nice option and it will help improve your imaging 
and it can make your life just a lot easier when you're trying to do visual work as well. It makes it a little bit easier to control everything without having to worry about your mount shaking and, and so forth. So anyway, uh, that's a look at the Celestron Motorized Focuser. Thanks for watching. Bye.